Today was a pretty rainy day, I didn't go outside at all. Instead I thought I would tell you the story of my most fucked up night in Japan. It involves the Japanese Yakuza, it involves prostitutes, it involves 4chan, it involves shit ton of alcohol, it somehow involves teleportation as well, and it involves or it ended up with me waking up in a hospital at 3am in Shinjuku with no real recollection how I got there. If you're interested in the story, keep watching. The story started back in 2015. Asa has just discovered water on the Mars. I don't actually know why I'm telling you the backstory of 2015. It doesn't have to do anything with the year. But in 2015, I came to Japan for the second time. I decided to stay here for seven weeks, spending one month in Tokyo and three months kind of traveling around the country. I was always kind of solo traveling, so it was always kind of difficult meeting people, especially this time because I was staying in a share house, so I didn't, I didn't have the hostile atmosphere around me in Tokyo, so I didn't really meet people easily. But even comes 4chan. 4chan, as you might know, is kind of the infamous website where people post a lot of different shit. Um, it is known for mostly like very kind of bad stuff like doxing and all of this like toxic behavior but however what most people don't know is that fortune also has a travel subsection with people just interested in travel and kind of talking about different places exchanging opinions and ideas and it's a pretty normal by fortune standards um, community which I was part of for a long time at that time there was a post about somebody traveling in Japan and wanting to meet up and I thought well I'm traveling alone it's always difficult to meet people so I thought why not I messaged that person we exchanged contacts and everything and we decided to meet up on a rainy Saturday in Shinjuku we went to Omoide Yokocho which is also known as Piss Alley I showed that in an earlier video and we went to look one of the small dive bars we had some yakitori we had some beer we start we talked and everything was really nice we just had a couple of beers everything went smoothly and unfortunately it kept raining so we just the beers just kept going and going and by the time that we left the bar I think we both were already at four beers in yeah, a little a little bus. We were both into photography at that time so we decided to just kind of walk around and photograph cool stuff. Um, one of our stops was the first stop was a combini to get some more alcohol. Yeah, it was, in hindsight maybe that wasn't a good idea but anyways we decided to get some more booze, even more drunk and we started to take pictures. Yeah I think at that point my memory kind of starts getting darker however I still kind of remember what happened so what happened was we since we were in Shinjuku we actually walked, walked into Kicho which is kind of the uh, more notorious or like like the most notorious district in Tokyo. It's kind of known as a district where prostitutes are, where kind of Yakuza hang out. It's not really that dangerous, especially it was still daytime at the time, but uh, in our drunk state we were approached by some guy who Japanese and I think he might have been on Yakuza, but I'm pretty sure that he was. And he asked us what we wanted to do and we said, yeah, we kind of want to do karaoke and all you can drink. Said, yeah, I, I get this cool place where you can get all you can drink and you get karaoke. And we were like, yeah, sure, why not? In our drunk state that makes sense. So we followed this guy up into like a very narrow tight like dark building upstairs I think to the 8th or 9th floor and there the first surprise came the cover charge to enter that place was I believe it was 8,000 yen per person which is roughly $80 for me it kind of seems already pretty weird um, for two hours of car work normally you would pay maybe 20 or 30 dollars that was quite the amount so I uh, like the other guy that I was with from fortune he I ended up paying the bill and we were led into a very kind of dark room with what looked like a bar and some seats and in the middle there was kind of a screen and everything. It felt a bit iffy. When we sat down, first we had, we were brought some drinks. Uh, we had, as I said, we wanted to have all you can drink. Now the issue was they had all you can drink, but the only two drinks that you could order were either hard whiskey, so whiskey on the rocks, or shochu, which is kind of like a Korean um, alcohol. I think it's kind of the same as whiskey, 40% alcohol. So very strong stuff. And we had two hours and that's all we had. And then, then came the prostitutes. So as we were sitting down, having a drink, suddenly two ladies appeared from either of our sites. And yeah, so as it turned out, we were we wandered into a brothel. So we, this lady sat next to us and started talking to us and started getting like touchy and feely. But we really only wanted to have a drink and we wanted to, well, we wanted to have all you can drink and we wanted to sing some karaoke. So we were not really interested in the prostitutes, which I guess, unfortunate for them, they didn't get any customers. So what happened was as soon as the prostitutes kind of realized that we were not gonna uh, take their services, they just kind of gave up. And <laughs> the weird thing was, it was like a big room and we were sitting on like benches here and then there were like other benches on the opposite side and the prostitutes just kind of went over and then lay down and like fell asleep and we were like in this room and well we had well two hours we had all you can drink whiskey and all you can drink shochu so we thought yeah why not why not drink the whiskey why not um so at that point really my mind just went 
black, like I had a blackout, so I believe that we might have drunk a lot of the whiskey, a lot of the shochu, and then we were kind of kicked out, I guess, because we, they realized that we are not gonna have sex with the prostitutes, so they just kicked us out, and yeah, at that point I don't know what happened. Uh, honestly, the next memory that I have is um, kind of being at the counter in the hospital, and at that point I they wanted my credit card so that they could charge me. I didn't have kind of insurance at the time, obviously, because I was just traveling in Japan, so they wanted to have my credit card, I gave it to them, and I think I also filled in something, I don't know, I was just completely um, blackout drunk. Um, I don't know how I got to the hospital, again, this this is the teleportation part because I have no fucking clue how I got there. I think somebody must have picked me up off the street and then they might have driven me there or they might have carried me there. I Honestly, to this date, no idea. What happened was that I was I was given like an, I think I was given, given an IV shot and yeah, that was it in the hospital and then the next memory was basically waking up at 3 a.m. and looking around being completely confused because I had no fucking idea what was going on or where I was and everything and yeah, well my first thought was it's like 3 a.m. and it's in the middle of the night in Shinjuku, the trains do not start running until like 5 a.m. So, and I don't know what I was supposed to do, I was just basically sitting in the waiting room, I wasn't in a hospital bed or anything, so I was just sitting there, so I guess that was the place for drunk people <laughs> to sleep out. So I thought, yeah, well, might as well go to back to sleep, so I just kind of fell asleep in the seat again for another two hours, and at 5 a.m. I don't know if I had to like tell somebody or like check out or anything, so I just kind of started looking for a back door and then just kind of darted out there, and yeah, then I was in a completely new area because I had no idea where that hospital was. I had to kind of, I didn't have any Google Maps or any mobile internet at the time, so I had to kind of get out my way back to the station, which took another hour, because <laughs> I was just blindly walking around Shinjuku, which is pretty big, and yeah, by, I don't know, by 6, 7, or maybe like by 7, I was finally back home. I had just passed out completely in my futon, and like, the night ended up costing me probably more than like almost $200 or so, because of the, all the, all the drinks and, and the hospital bill, which came to, I think, roughly $150 or so. And I also broke my camera, which I don't know. I, I don't know how I must have fallen or I don't know, must have dropped it at some point. I don't know. Yeah, that was my story of how I woke up at 3 a.m. in a hospital in Japan in Tokyo with no re recollection of how I got there. Yeah, hope you enjoyed this little story time. Sorry that today wasn't anything interesting vlog wise, it was just a rainy day. And yeah, tomorrow we are planning on going to the west part from here. Just basically, we are planning on moving to, to closer to Tokyo either next week or two weeks from now and so we thought we would explore like further to the west since we are still here so we're either gonna go hiking to like a nearby mountain maybe we're gonna go to Hakone which is doable as a day trip from here and on Saturday we are going to go to a um, beer factory to have kind of a beer tour or like I guess they're gonna show us, show us how the beer is created and everything so if you want to see that, I would recommend subscribing if you haven't yet. And yeah, I'll see you tomorrow.